And I think that we are on, on the verge of a new um, model for society, new uh, model for politics, um, a new model for work and, and uh, employment, um, and that we are exiting the industrial age and that we are entering an age that we still have to name. My name is Lars Thompson. I'm chief futurist and founder of Future Matters in Zurich, uh, Switzerland. We are consulting companies um, in the quest of predicting what is coming within the time frame of the next 520 weeks, 10 years, in terms of technologies and changes in the workplace. Innovation becomes more and more important as a business factor for uh, companies, especially um, of for consumer good companies, they cannot depend on uh, the fact that you can sell a product forever, but you have to really keep inno innovating in a very speedy and, and, and professional manner. Um, that also um, requires safe communication, um, that you can work with an environment where you can use this innovation without being hacked or um, pirated. Uh, by others, but it's also carried out by global teams, so blockchain also plays a, a role in innovation. It is a very important layer on the internet to make it, uh, uh, to, to get to the stage that we can really trust uh, what is being communicated and transacted over, over the internet. As long as we don't have these trusted in instances um, we cannot really rely on this network on, in, in the way that we need. And if we are going forward to the Internet of Things, um, we are so much dependent on this network and, and we have so many mission-critical elements in this uh, network that um, a blockchain is a very vital and very important element that we can really make sure that uh, everything that we receive from one end to the other is, um, you know, can be trusted. We as humans, our main asset over computers is that we are able to be creative. Um, we cannot even stop it. Now, if you move into a new apartment, for example, and there's nothing in there, and you go in there, and, and, and even if you are uh, uh, number-driven, you immediately start using your head and trying to um, imagine how this apartment should look like if you are living in there and you're starting to put furniture in and stuff like that. So this ability probably is the most uh, vital um, skill set that companies have in, uh, in, in terms of being innovative, you know, being ahead of the others and fostering this um, creative potential is probably one of the number one, or is the number one management task today. We will have a war for talents. And these talents, they cannot be acquired by offering them more money. They can only be acquired by offering them a part of um, being part of a team that does creative and great things that they can be proud of. Money is important, but it's not the element that drives people towards a company. And right now, we already see that the most talented people, they don't go to the jobs that pay the best, but offer um, the most interesting field of applying their knowledge and their skills. So we believe that companies in the future will be very much value-driven, um, Management will set a set of values and, and rules that attracts people to um, work in this environment. And um, we have this projection that in 10 years from now, companies will act more like clubs or, um, well, yeah, clubs that people will join, um, that they want to be a member of, instead of employers and employees being contracted to, you know, deliver certain things. Creating companies within a community where you have neighbors that are creative as well is something that companies learn more and more. There's probably not a single major corporation in Germany or in Europe right now that doesn't think about having um, a 
you know, research facility in California just to be part of this creative community. It, it, it really doesn't have to do much with taxes or costs of living. It's, it's basically um, providing an infrastructure and a place where people come to to perform their work that they do best. We see communities who have a common vision and just start to develop technologies you know, within a community, not within a company or um, uh, closed environment. And um, that also has to do with the fact that we are changing our attitude towards money. Um, money used to be the number one priority in people's lives in the 80s and 90s, probably the early 2000s as well. But if you ask people today what money, money really, um, if, if money really matters to them that much, you see that we have different, a different value set at the moment where we have um, other priorities than just earning money and spending money. Um, if you ask uh, the youth or young people, um, material goods become decreasingly or decrease in importance and non-material values like friendships or um, a safe environment to work in, the ability to use your own talents and skills in a way that makes you happy and to be proud of them, become more and more important to them than material things. Most economies um, cannot imagine a time where we would have a recession for more than two or three or four years. So we have this paradigm that we have to grow in every sector every year. Basically, that means that you have to consume 2% more sugar every year, 2% more white wine. You have to drive 2% more with your car and consume 2% more energy, and, you know, whatever. So in total, uh, we have this, um, this imperative um, to grow. Now, with these technologies that we are facing, we will have the ability to do things more efficiently, but we will also, um, by doing things more efficiently, have less growth. So for example, if you have self-driving cars, um, they will be much cheaper, uh, people will buy less cars, and if people buy less cars, you know, the growth in this sector goes down. And although the life of people might be even better, the economy is threatened by decline. And people are get, getting very scared when, people, when the economy declines because they, they slow their own private consumption by thinking, well, maybe uh, if, if everything goes down, I'm not going to buy the new car or you know, um, build a new house or whatever. And so we are threatened within the next 10 years by a world, worldwide crisis or a, a next... Um, um, world crisis um, that has to do with the techn technological development, but also has to do with the crisis of work. Innovation is an offering to people and say, okay, here's something that you can make your life better, safer, uh, more convenient. And people are looking at that and saying, yeah, I want that. So I'm very optimistic that in the long run, we will choose the right things as humans. And our ambition is to make our lives more comfortable, more safe, um, and more worth living. Um, the only problem that we have right now is that the speed of innovation is so fast that the structure on which our society bases um, is not able to in integrate these innovative offerings to the structure that is needed to hold together the society that, on the way that we used to know it. And um, this has the effect that we have something that Obama called the inequality gap, uh, that we have people who are scared of the future and say, hey, you know, this is not my future. I, I don't see myself in that. And other people who say, you know, we have to speed up this speed even, you know, even more.
uh, to get there faster. And this is the tension that we have that we are facing uh, in in these years, probably for the next ten years. The tension between those who want to slow things down and the tension of those who want to speed things up will probably tear parts of our democracies and societies apart. Everybody knows that from a, com from a computer. There are points in working with a computer or the, the, there are instances where you know this, this, this thing is almost, you know, it's, cr it's crashed. You know, you cannot see the mouse pointer anymore and, and it's very slow. And you try to save the document that you haven't saved uh, by not turning it off. But in some point in time you say, I have to do a reboot. And you know, you push the button for three seconds, the whole system shuts down. And all the drivers, you know, put it back up again and the system runs again. And I think this is the most likely scenario uh, for the next 20 years that we have to do a reboot uh, in our societies uh, in order to take full, adv full advantage of starting on a clean sheet. It's not that we will have forgotten everything. We will not start in the Stone Age. Uh, but we will have to rebuild um, our basic pillars of society. Um, uh, and we have to take into account what we can do with artificial intelligence and networks and, and all that in order to benefit um, the lives of everybody. We will look at people and say, OK, what is what is the things that you can that I cannot do and that we can, you know, join forces? Um, much more than today, where we look at people and say, "Okay, how big is your car and how much money do you have on your bank account?" So I I believe that the the future will be even more human or humane, uh, uh, no human uh, than uh, uh, than the last hundred years that we've seen.